So we have our domestic hot water system built now. So the system's built and we've uh, sort of set up some of the components and we've um, added the system to the honeybee rooms and all of that seems to be flowing through nicely into our PHPP. So that's all great. Um, that's, that's, that seems to be working and certainly you can use it all this way. You can use these grasshopper components and set all your parameters just this way. But as I said in the last video, I don't love to use it this way. Entering things like just total length here um, uh, is not my preference. And so I'm going to show you a different way that we can do this by just drawing everything back in the Rhino scene. So let's start with this recirculation loop. Let's start with how we're going to manage the recirculation loop information here. So back in my Rhino scene, let me just minimize that grasshopper. And now back in my Rhino scene here, Let's take a look at our building. So it's not super compact. We've got a bathroom way over here, a kitchen, a mechanical space, and then a bathroom stacked right above it. So reasonably com compact, but we do have this bathroom sort of way over here. So maybe we would say, well, you know, because the bathroom is so far away from the hot water tank, right, here's our hot water tank way over here, um, maybe we want to have a recirculation loop that flows through. Now, maybe that's overkill for a building of this size, but just so that we can sort of show how it would work. Let me go ahead and model that in. Uh, first of all, let me go ahead and hide this so that just for a second, just so that we can kind of really see what we're up to here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a recirculation loop from the hot water tank out to the bathroom, you kind of roughly where, where it might go. So let me go over to my layers and I'm going to come into systems. And in systems, I'm going to make a new sub layer and we'll call it domestic hot water. And let me go ahead and set that as the current layer. And um, I'm going to uh, let me set it. Let me set it as red, actually, so that we can kind of really see what we're doing uh, as we go. Let's say okay. Um, yeah, that, let me let's, let's leave it like that for now, and let's see. That should work. All right. So let's say if this is my hot water tank, what do I want to do? I want to somehow draw a loop that comes off goes to the bathroom, and then comes all the way back to the hot water tank, right? So it's a loop. It goes around. All right, well, we could do that a couple different ways, but I am just going to go ahead and use my regular polyline tool, and let's draw the first leg of our loop. So let me come off the hot water tank, and I'm just going to sort of roughly lay this in. I'm not being super exact. If we had a floor plan or something, that would be awesome. We could sort of follow that. Um, but I'm going to just sort of come out here to this uh, bathroom space and then sort of click somewhere and then um, right click to terminate. So let's call that, let's say that that's our forward loop. So that loop is coming out, going across, and coming down. Maybe I'll make that, um, so make it red so that it's, yeah, so that it's forward color. Uh, okay, right. So, so that's pretty good. Now we need a now we need a return loop as well. So I'm going to come over here to my polyline again, and I'm going to come off the end, some dimension. This is, again, I'm just sort of roughing it in right now, just for sort of demonstration purposes more than anything. You could, uh, you know, follow make it make it whatever sort of um, however specific and accurate you want it to be. So come over here, and I'll come up. And then let me terminate, coming back to the beginning. And I guess let's um, let's do this. We'll make this one. Come to my properties. Come to this one, and we will say let's make it make it blue, so that it sort of shows. Up. We'll make it like a darker blue, so that it shows up a little better. So you know, right? This is our return loop. So the hot water goes out, cold water comes back, etc. So we've got a forward and a return, and they make a closed loop. They sort of um, you know make a make a full loop there. Okay, so interesting. So we have this geometry in our rhino scene now. How do I get it into my grasshopper scene? Uh, well, I'll select it, and let me come up to my grasshopper scene, and all I need to do is uh, reference it in as a curve, or geometry, however you want to reference it in. I'll say multiple curves. We'll call this our recirc loop. So I'm referencing in those curves. And we will do this just to indicate that it's an input. And now we should be able to just take this and input it right into our pipe geometry. So let's do that. Let's see what happens when we take the curves that we've referenced from the Rhino scene and just push them in 
to our pipe geometry here on the recirc piping object instead of setting the number as you know some calculated number where we're going to push in some geometry. Right? These are reference curves. Okay, so it seems like it worked. And what are we getting now? So let's go ahead and get rid of this. So what does our research loop system look like at this point? We'll take a look at the output here. We'll notice that it, it seems to be successfully reading the lengths of those curves. So curve number one is 10 meters long. Curve number two is 11 meters long. Right? So we've got those two curves. But notice here under diameters and thicknesses and convectivities and reflective, just, we're getting a bunch of nuns. So what does that mean? Well, what's happening here is if you try and tell this component to read that information from the rhino scene, if you reference in some curved geometry, it's going to say, oh, okay, well, let me go to rhino and let me try and pull all of that information about diameters and thicknesses and etc. from rhino. But we haven't assigned any of that information, but we can. So with my curves, minimize this, with my curves uh, uh, selected back in rhino, if you come up to the pH tools ribbon and you come over here to set domestic hot water research pipe parameters, we can assign some parameters to those curves. What can we assign? Well, things like pipe diameter, insulation thicknesses, uh, insulation conductivity, is the insulation, does the insulation have a reflective coating, etc. So I'm going to say, you know, for a house like this, let's say that the research loop is like is what is like, let's say it's like five eighths of an inch, and let's say it's insulated with one inch insulation, and let's say it's like fiberglass insulation, and it, yes, it has a reflective coating. So I'll say okay. And when I do that, just as we've seen so many times before with my attribute user text, that information is going to get logged or saved onto this geometry. And so now, if I come back into my grasshopper scene and I push that geometry through, it should be smart enough to go to Rhino, to calculate all the lengths, and then read all of that geometry, or all of those parameters, off of the Rhino geometry. And notice here we're getting our thicknesses, 5 eighths of an inch, the insulation thicknesses, an inch, con uh, conductivity of the insulation, 0.04, and reflectiveness, yes, yes. So how did that affect our... PHPP, let me go back to the PHPP, and notice all of that information is flowing through into our circulation loop now. So that's great, right? There's our 21.3 total, uh, 21.3 meters total length, uh, 15 millimeters uh, with pipe width, 25 millimeters of insulation thickness, so 5 eighths of an inch and one inch, um, insulation, like fiberglass insulation conductivity, and daily circulation period of 18 hours. You can change that. We can set that here uh, in the daily period if we, if we like. So that's one method that you can choose to use. Uh, it's the method I prefer um, because as, as we've talked about all, a lot, um, I like to, I prefer to have this in the rhino scene. I like to draw things out. I like to just have the geometry. Um, we also, of course, have the side benefit of being able to, you know, make a drawing of this and output this, that kind of stuff. And, and it keeps our, I think, it keeps our grasshopper scene a lot uh, lighter and, and more streamlined. So that part is great. Uh, one, one additional thing to note in that vein of sort of reducing components, if you're not going to be setting any of these parameters, if you don't need to set up any of these parameters in the grasshopper scene, we actually don't need this component at all. I can just take this curve, because remember the curve has all of the parameters already sort of associated with it, and just feed it right into the system itself. And we'll get, I can now delete these research piping components out of the system. And now if we go back to our Rhino side, or excuse me, our PHPP, notice we get all the same parameters. All of this information is hosted on the curve in Rhino. And so I can just harvest all that information right out. I don't need that extra component in my grasshopper scene. So, you know, cuts down on the number of components and the amount of spaghetti and sort of keeps things tidier and more manageable, I think. So that's one way you could choose to work with these components. Again, you can always use the grasshopper side ones. Um, you, don't, you don't have to do it this way, but uh, as we've said, I, I, I like to in many ways. So what about the pipe, piping branches? Uh, yeah, we can definitely do the same thing with the piping branches. So let's do that. Let's draw in some piping branches. So the first thing that I like to do to draw in piping branches is draw the vertical legs. So let's say for the sink, we're going to have a 24-inch vertical leg. 
and what else we've got a we've got a faucet over here let's say here we've got another um, vertical 24 inch leg let's let's assume that all the piping is running in the floor here I guess that's an assumption I don't know if that's true but uh, washer dryer um, I don't know if it would have a hot water hookup. Let's assume not. And then, um, oh, definitely the shower, of course. And the shower should have a, I don't know what, how, where do you want to, where do you, where do you guys like to mount the shower heads? Let's say five feet, five foot, five foot six. I don't know, wherever you, wherever you would mount those. And then what we can do is we can, let me come over here and just to make this easier, turn off the CAD plan. That, now what we can do is we can, um, go from the fixture, so I'm going from the fixture over to the, um, the recirc loop, right? And so maybe we would, maybe we would uh, do it this way and come across and kind of do that and come here and I can draw in the actual piping, however it actually exists in the project. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna select both of those and type join to make that a, a polyline um, you know, you can use whatever, you know, if you want to draw polylines natively, um, you can use whatever, whatever, um, you know, Rhino tools work best for you. I'm also going to, should we leave them red? Yeah, let's leave them red because they're, you know, hot water. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, what else did we have? Oh, we have a second floor. We had a whole second floor. So we've got, and we have a bathroom up there, right? To show. There it is. Uh, so we've got a couple more fixtures up here on the second floor, and let's let's show. Let's say this one is. Let's say this one. The faucet is on the interior. We'll say five foot again. Let's say five foot vertical, and then we've got our um, we've got our sink as well, and that'll be like twenty four inches vertical. What just happened? I think I might have snapped in the wrong spot. Let's say here. 24 inches vertical. All right, and now we have to turn off those plans again. Now we have to sort of get from here down. So let's say that we'll do something like this. Let's say that let's assume, I don't know what, let's assume that we're going to come over and we're going to come, I don't know, let's just say that we're going to come right down from above. Uh, maybe this isn't realistic. Maybe we would, you know, maybe we would come down a wall cavity or something in, in reality. Uh, you know, as I said, you can sort of make this tape join. You can make this as accurate or as sort of schematic as you uh, as you like for your for your project. I'm gonna just do something like this for now. Let's say polyline PL and then come down. Notice that I am, however, one thing to notice, I am drawing each leg. Um, in this case, uh, separately, as though as though each one were a uh, as, though, as though it were a manifold system, and um, to join. There we go. Come on, what are you doing? Stop it! Sorry, having trouble. <sighs> I should just draw these as polylines. There we go. Type join. Did it join? Yes, it did. All right. Um, notice that we've doubled up this vertical, uh, and so each one of these fixtures is sort of being treated as though it's a you know a manifold system, and it's got to run all the way back to the to the source there. And um, for for this type of passive house work, that's how we're supposed to um, model those. Uh, so it gives you results in a sort of conservative estimate of the total heat loss um, of the the uh, water which remains inside the piping. Um, Anyway, um, again, consult your uh, PHPP manual for more information on that. So let me select these, select this, and I will select these two. So I've selected my, what's that? One, two, three, four, five. I've selected my five branches. And I'll come back to my grasshopper scene. And I'll reference those in as curves. I'll say set multiple curves. I guess those. And we go call these branch piping okay and of course what are we going to do with that well we're going to get rid of this uh, direct data input and we're just going to reference this information into our pipe geometry so let me do that I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drop that right in to our pipe geometry here and let's see how that changes our 
PHPP. Let me delete this, this guy, and there we go. All right, so what just happened to our PHPP? Well, let's go back and take a look. So interestingly, if I come into my come into my individual pipes section here, notice that we've got a thickness. So they're all being tagged as half inch right now. We can change that, of course. We have a total accumulated length of 16 meters. So it sort of added up all of those individual pipe elements. It counted up how many. So notice the number of tap points is five. Go back to our rhino scene for a second and make sure that that is correct. Too many windows. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. And six and 365 for the utilization period. Of course, we can adjust that in our rhino scene. So all of that information is being brought in directly through our rhino scene into Grasshopper. And so we don't really need to set anything here. Again, if I draw these differently, if I change the physical geometry of any of these elements, if I change the physical geometry of any of these individual elements, then the length automatically updates. I don't have to be going in and sort of measuring anything with dimensions and sort of keeping track of things in a spreadsheet or something silly like that, right? It's all just here. All the information is right here. Um, we just draw it the way it exists and just reference it in and all that information flows through. Now, we don't have anything, uh, I should note, we don't have anything yet built on the Rhino side for the tank. So sort of just like the ERV, that's probably on our to-do list. We should, we should build a component so that you can actually make a tank in the Rhino side, um, make an ERV in the Rhino side. Uh, that, would all be, that, would all be, um, that would all be great as well. Um, I should note as well, of course, uh, just like with our research loop, if you're not going to use any of these inputs to actually set any information, um, you do not actually need this component. You can just take the branch piping and feed it directly into the system itself um, because the, the only information that we're really interested in here is the length. Um, uh, unless you wanted to set the um, the diameter, unless the diameter, you know, it's going to use half inch by default. If that wasn't true, then you would need that other component to... Um, uh, to, to set that, that information. But if, if you're not, if, if you're happy with the, the default, then all we need to do is just feed the curves directly into our branch piping input here, and uh, we're off and running. I guess the very last thing that we should do is we should, um, we should set this. We'll call this whole house domestic hot water. Uh, we should set the name. Um, it's not going to matter too much in this case. It doesn't, doesn't matter at all in this case. Um, the only place that, that matters that you want to be careful about naming and um, sort of cataloging the systems is if you have more than one system. If you have one domestic hot water system for, like I said, the lobby of the building and another domestic hot water system for the uh, commercial tenant spaces and a different domestic hot water system for the residential spaces above, um, you know, those, that would be a case where you'd have multiple systems and you'd want to keep track of them by naming them unique, uniquely so that you can um, uh, control that, how they, how they output into the PHPPs uh, later on. Um, there we go. There is our domestic hot water system. Uh, go back to our PHPP. That is all working nicely, right? Everything is flowing through. Well, is it? What's happening over here? Why are we getting? What are we getting? Errors? Why are we getting? Uh, why are we getting errors here? What, what's happening? I thought everything was flowing through. Well, yes. There's one really important piece of information, which the PHPP does not yet know. So it is unable to calculate domestic hot water consumption because as of right now, it doesn't know how many people are in the building. It does not know the occupancy of the building. So we could come over here and just go to verification. And just for a number of dwelling units, just say one. And as soon as we do that, notice that we are now able to calculate the number of occupants. And if I go back to my domestic hot water, notice all of those errors went away. And now we are getting good totals for everything. Right, so the one piece of information that we had not set that PHPP needed to know before it could calculate any of the heat loss values is the occupancy of the building, the total number of people in the building. So we can certainly just type that number in. 
that's fine. We can always come in. With, you know, it's just a PHP. It's just Excel. We come in and type in whatever numbers we want. But of course, I don't want to be doing that, right? I don't. I do not want to be in a situation where I'm entering some information in the Rhino model and some information in the Excel model because you'll forget which information gets entered where. I promise you'll forget. If you don't forget right away, you'll forget after six months, after you've put the project down and then have to pick the project back up again and correct something, you'll forget where you entered that information and how it got entered. So I don't like that. I don't want to enter any information in the PHPP directly. I want all the information to come from my grasshopper scene. So for the time being, our domestic hot water is not going to work. Eventually, we'll see, we do, of course, have the ability to set the occupancy uh, as well as um, a bunch of other parameters, but we will see that in future videos. So I don't want to get into that yet. We're sort of working our way there. We have a bunch of other stuff to set yet, um, but we, of course, will be able to set up the occupancy and the, the load, um, the occupant load and the number of dwelling units and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we will, of course, be able to set that here in our grasshopper scene. So for now, you're not going to get any results on domestic hot water, but, but trust me, eventually we will fill in that information and all of that will flow through properly. So that pretty much brings us to the end of our domestic hot water input. So we do have the domestic hot water all configured correctly. Again, even though it's not showing you final results, I promise it will once we set up all the occupancy stuff. And so I think we will come back and in our next video, maybe we will turn our attention to some of those elements. We'll, we'll look at the occupancy and the appliance energy consumption, and um, we'll sort of round out the, we'll, we'll round out the data input for those sections uh, before we turn our attention to our heating and cooling system setup.